I'll move that uh, we uh, approve proposed warrant article number one in the total amount of $24,944,000 for reconstruction and equipping the Hampton Academy. I'll second that. Okay. Oh, okay. I think I think it would be best to read if I could get someone to read this. I'm going to read the whole thing. Board, if you would, because Shall the it town, has two parts. Excuse me. Shall the Hampton School District vote to raise and appropriate the sum of twenty-four million nine hundred forty-five thousand dollars for reconstructing and equipping the Hampton Academy Middle School, and authorize the issuance of not more than the same amount of bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, RSA Chapter 33, and authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon. Although I should say thereof, I think. Uh, and further to raise and appropriate the additional sum of $460,550 for the payment of the first year's interest on bonds or notes authorized by this article and authorize the school board to apply for, accept, and expend any grants for this purpose and take any other action necessary to carry out this vote. All right. And a second? Second. All right. And <clears throat> what I will do at this point, Nathan, is leave this open for um, you to do a slight presentation for us on this? Very brief one. Yeah, I, I'm going to do the brief presentation on this. Um, I think it's important that we, we had a chance uh, at our last meeting to uh, review the proposal, and I think it's important that you have an understanding about what exactly it is that we're trying to accomplish here. Mm -hmm. Just a just to remind folks, there was a packet that was delivered to you last time which included uh, information about cost, in impact, tax impact, and also had site site information. So you have that with you. I think I dropped it on anyone who didn't. All of the pertinence we tried to wrap up, so you've got a one paper that includes some of that as well. And all of the comments that we made, some were buried in that. Thank you. So we know that Hampton Academy's first um, building was built in 1939, making it 77 years old. Uh, 1965 was the second section, and then the last section that was built, that sixth grade wing, was built in 1976. So we clearly know, like you as homeowners know, that you know we really need to do something. When you've lived in a house for 77 years, you need to fix it up. And same with a house that's been 50 years old, as well as a home that's 40 years old. Hampton Academy is no different. The, the difference is, is that every day, on a daily basis, we have nearly anywhere between 450 and 500 people pass through those halls and into classrooms and into the building every day. So it does take, like everything else, it, it, needs, uh, it needs to be uh, addressed. Um, I think that uh, on the first slide, you know, the whole reason was, why did the board want to move forward? Why did we want to propose this? Um, and, and, and the second part of my, my quick overview will be why now. So the, the reason for the proposal um, really is for multi-purposes. The first being the most important, and that was to uh, replace the, um, the sixth grade wing. That's that single story building that jets out from the original buildings uh, that houses um, sixth grade. There are nine classrooms, bathroom, and a couple of small uh, conference areas where we work with youngsters individually. Uh, and it is in disrepair. We have issues around ceilings. We have leakage. Uh, we have poor, very poor air quality. Hallways are narrow with, um, with lockers um, don't provide the kind of passages that we need for youngsters and just has not met our needs. There's two science labs in there that are just under 900 square feet, don't meet the state standard for 1,200 square feet for science labs, nor are they equipped for the youngsters to do that kind of work. So all in all, that, that whole wing really needs to be replaced. We, will, we are proposing that we replace it with a full-size gymnasium. Currently, Hampton Academy does not have a full-size gymnasium. We are not able to use it for a number of sports because of low ceilings and because the size of the room is too small. Even our phys ed classes have posed problems with us because they, 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 the walls are right at the edge of the court. So when you get 7th and 8th graders <clears throat> running and moving, um, we've often had issues with them where there's no place to go except the wall. And I won't describe 
the results of that, but you can imagine it's just small. Upstairs in the, uh, and by the way, there's no seating down there, so we can't really use it for a game, um, nor, nor would you be able to. Upstairs in the Eastman gym, uh, same issues. Uh, the size of the gym is too small. Uh, there's very, there is some seating up there. There is some pull-out bleaches, as you know. But again, the size prohibits us from having any games there. Currently, Hampton Academy is renting uh, time down at the uh, one of the local um, gym areas. I believe it's the rim. Uh, we also are um, we are proposing in that gymnasium that we would have seating for 500, so that we would be able to use it not only for Hampton Academy, but obviously other activities that happen in the town during the week. Probably one of the most important things that we do every day is around our programs. And so, what, you know, one asks, well, what are you going to do around programs? And I think our biggest um, effort is around science and science labs. We have two classrooms that meet the square footage for a lab and have uh, appropriate equipment and area and water and access. Um, but the other, uh, the remaining uh, four science classrooms, as well as our STEM lab, you know we have a new STEM program. It's been very successful at Hampton Academy, um, is not in an appropriate size room. So we will make those renovations to increase the size so that we can have the appropriate lab tables and the activities that we feel our students need uh, in, as they prepare to go on to Winnicunnan. Another area that's really an, an important for us in terms of program is around our unified arts. Right now, our band, our chorus, and our music have no uh, proper facilities. Right now, our band is downstairs in the basement where the old um, uh, uh, workshop used to be. Um, the uh, chorus is off to the side, off the, that little stage downstairs in the cafeteria. Uh, so it's really been problematic. If you look at our art room, it's way undersized, probably around 600 square feet for our art room, and it just isn't enough room for the students with that kind of activity. So we intend to uh, improve the square footage for those programs. Um, as in our old, ho home, old homes, we have issues around things like mechanicals, um, HVC. Our, we have Basically, there is no exchange of air at Hampton Academy. There is no exchange system. There's no ventilation systems. It's it's called open the windows and hope that you get a good breeze. And don't get if me you're wrong. On, if you're on the wrong side, you don't want to open the windows. You don't want to open it because be. it's too hot. But the other problem is, is that the windows are, are almost impossible to open because of their age and, and the, way they are, they, the way they've been developed and the, what's happened over the years, right, uh, that um, they have not been teachers, we don't even allow the teachers to open them, quite frankly, because we've had a number of teachers hurt themselves trying to lift, and uh, so we need, we know that we, we will replace that. But the real culprit is the poor ventilation, and the, and the poor ventilation that occurs throughout the building will address that. Uh, along with electrical, all of our electrical systems have to be upgraded. I know we just talked about technology and the importance of technology, well, it is critical to our students. Our kids are using computers and activities and applications, and they're on the World Wide Web, and they're researching every single day in our classrooms now. It, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing to watch. Um, and by the way, take a walk down through the first and kindergarten rooms down at Center School, and you'll see the little ones on the computers. They know what to do. They know how to use the apps. And uh, so they're, they, you know, they're coming up to the middle school and on to uh, Winnicunnant. We were very pleased that Winnicunnant followed suit and put in um, a Chromebooks to all their ninth graders. And of course, as you know, we've had that initiative at Hampton Academy for the last several years. So electrical um, has to be upgraded in that in that school. Um, we also have safety issues, and as you know, the last several years, we have undertaken two significant uh, reviews, one by the um, Homeland Security from the state of New Hampshire and the emergency management, along with a, a, a group called Oganis, who worked with our police, our police uh, force, and they have done um, evaluations. They spent uh, three days, each, each group spent three days in our district evaluating our safety at our schools and had made a number of recommendations to us. I don't want to get into all the details about the safety because some of it is directly related to keeping ourselves safe. But in the, in the project, there will be issues that will be addressed around safety. 
um, entrance into the building. Right now, kids are coming in at different locations. We want to be able to make sure that all youngsters filter into the building in one monitored location and, um, and, and not be mixed with adults um, so that we can better oversee that. So it's things like that um, and safety, other safety issues for our students uh, throughout and during the school day. Um, uh, let's see, I mentioned that. Uh, the, 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 the one piece that um, we've been asked about a, probably a little bit more, and that's the auditorium. Um, we currently do not have a facility at the middle school that will seat all of our students and our staff and any guests. So when we have these events, which are awesome events, you know, plays and we have Veterans Day, and Memorial Day celebrations and all kinds of things that happen. We have guest speakers. We're not always able to um, have all of our students in the building. So the auditorium will allow us. It will, it will um, be uh, wider. We'll, we'll be switching the stage from where it is now to the back side where there'll be some new construction to accommodate that. But that will allow us to have an auditorium in our community. Um, uh, everyone at the facilities committee highly recommended this uh, because they felt it was not only something that was of value to our students and our school and uh, quite frankly um, Center and Marston also can use that facility um, uh, and the community as well so <coughs> we're looking forward to it uh, I had a conversation with uh, a town manager Welsh and he he's he indicated that they would like to be able to use it um, and and I and that's what it should be I don't think any school should be just a school seven to three I think a school is part of the community it's the fabric of your community and I would uh, I would hope that people would recognize the value of that um, that particular um, um, renovation project to change the Eastman gym into the auditorium uh, we also have some other things that we need to upgrade and in, in our, uh, our cafeteria will be upgraded as well as our kitchen. Right now we have had uh, reviews by the um, State Food Service Department. They come down and evaluate all the work that we do and how we do things and how we deliver food. And not that we cook at Hampton Academy. We will continue to satellite because it's an effective, efficient way for us to work, right? Because it helps us with labor costs and all those other things. But, but they still have jobs to do. They still have to cut up things, and they still have to prepare things and put them on trays and present them, and they heat some of the food when it comes over. They, they may reheat, keep the pizza hot, whatever the kids are having. And there's no space to do that. They're doing that kind of preparation next to the dishwasher. Well, we've been dinged a few times <clears throat> that perhaps that isn't the best way to use our space. So um, we are proposing that the, kitchen be, um, it, that the kitchen be upgraded for us. We also have um, proposed in our in the it, we have proposed um, a community room, a room that we feel that um, groups can use, our school board can use for community events when they have meetings, when they have their budget deliberations. Um, we'll be able to broadcast them in, the, in that room. But we also know that our, our 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 most revered group, our senior citizens, have have been limited in space where they they would. Um, they would like to be able to use a space in town. And it's interesting, it came up in the surveys. It wasn't somebody's grandiose idea. It came up in the surveys. Survey after survey after survey indicated a need to at least have a space for seniors. And since we were doing that, it, that, that about a, I think it's a 1,400 square foot room. It's a good size room, good size room, so that you can do arts and crafts, so that they can be bingo and that they're not limited in terms of the activities. Uh, right now they are limited given the lack of space. Um, and finally, the, the traffic flow. As you know, um, Academy Ave is off limits at 7, <laughs> 7.15 in the morning and probably around 2.30, 2.35 in the afternoon. Cars are parked on the sides of the street. Kids are crossing over back and forth. <laughs> Uh, we have we have three people out there every day, but it's still not a safe situation. We've redesigned uh, the front so that the um, students, uh, the buses, and the parents can come in off the street to drop kids off and then um, deliver them uh, each day and to pick them up. So those kinds of things were were um, were accommodated in the plan. 
So everybody says, why now? Why are you doing this now? And I can't tell you what a better time for the community to do this. Uh, just, I, I said to Nathan, I really took a couple days off over vacation, but I probably shouldn't because uh, things that popped out to me. It's a good time. We're coming out of a bad time in terms of the economy. Look at this. Wages in New Hampshire expected to increase in 2016. Year-end business picture looks rosy in New Hampshire. New Hampshire businesses say 2016 has bright promise. The one that's near and dear to my heart, because it is my business, is census. Um, the state of New Hampshire gained in census. We had more births than we had deaths, which was good news for me, you know, as I age. But also the <laughs> fact that we're filling seats. We have, we have babies coming. And the other I issue that's impacted our community is immigrants. Our English language uh, learner class has doubled. We, we, we actually, the board just last month authorized an increase, uh, one additional teacher of English, uh, uh, teacher for English speakers of other languages, because our enrollment has just, it's, du it's more than doubled, by the way. Um, uh, just recently, we're up to 34. When Nathan and I came here five years ago, we had eight kids. So the population is growing. The economy is better. Um, and and uh, the, the other two areas that, are, that have impacted us is the bond rates. I'm, I, you know, I talk about the mortgage that I had for my host, my first home that my husband and I built in 1976. Our mortgage rate was eight and three quarters. Okay, the mortgage rates right now for the bond bank are 3.15. Now everybody says, well, they're going up. Yes, they will go up. Right now, we think we're pretty good for a July, um, a June bond, right? June a June buy, June, June buy, June of 16. Um, that will be very close to 3.15. It's ideal time to do this at a rate that I don't think we'll see again. And, and so I think that's an important piece. The other... It's, it's worth saying that the in talking to the municipal bond bank that the analysts suggest now that the, uh, the short-term rates may be impacted by what the Fed is doing but the long-term rates have already baked in that expectation for some time, so the 20-year rates should not hiccup significantly, if at all, from what's happening in the short run. But for what it's worth, we may have talked about this last time, a quarter of a percent increase in those bond rates against the project we're talking about for 20 years is another $800,000 in interest costs. So as, as you anticipate the potential for rising interest rates, and, and them having some impact eventually in long-term borrowing, it becomes timely when you contemplate what an $800,000 hit is for the passage of time. So, And lastly, uh, Marston, uh, Marston's bond is being paid off in August, uh, this August, August of 16, and then two years later in August of 18, the center school bond will be paid off. So that will help at least cushion some of the blow uh, relative to people's concerns around the costs related to this project. Um, I guess that's my spiel. Um, and Nathan uh, did a, a pretty nifty little sheet here that shows costs for the project and what that impact relative to taxes. So I'm going to let him jump Just, in. We summarized that. Then we summarized that for you last time we were here. We had the information that was new to us from the, the team of uh, owner project manager, uh, the uh, architect and engineering firm, and the construction uh, firm that we were working with. They had put these estimates together. And so I offer up to you the three elements that you had already seen. They're on the slides. They're in the, the largely blue document that we sent around. And again, they were in the package you got last time. The hard cost, the construction cost for the project is anticipated at $21,895,000. That contemplates, a, that's a blending of, of uh, new construction on the, on the elements of new construction in the $225,000, excuse me, $225 a square foot range and renovation rates uh, for uh, for the renovated spaces in the 145 to $160 a square foot range. That includes all of the site work, et cetera. The soft costs added on to that include our architectural fees, which I can tell you traditionally are in the 7.5 to 8 or 9% of project scope 
kind of range for pricing. We negotiated with ours at 4.5%, which for us really was a savings in there that was significant, uh, as opposed to a million and a half to a million six. We're going to be sub $1 million in terms of what the fees would be for architecture and engineering. Uh, our owner's project management fees will be there. Uh, you folks have seen, I think, in the public uh, presentations that have been done, Gino Baroni uh, and the team that's, that serves him uh, at Trident. Uh, we're working really hard to limit any of our FF&E costs, our furniture fixtures and equipment. Sometimes that's a really big element of projects. For us, the superintendent engaged the staff in, a, in an inventory analysis in the building. It's not that we don't want to equip the building with the best that we can. It's that we have decent equipment in many, many cases. The estimate right now is that we'll be able to salvage and continue to use somewhere around 75 percent of the equipment that's in the building. We'll need to replace about 25 percent. And then we'll be attentive to inventory turns so that that which for furniture and equipment that was nearing the end of its life for usefulness will see itself addressed over the years that follow. But we don't have to mortgage necessarily as a part of this package, as a part of this project, things like a student desk or a student chair necessarily. The other piece of soft cost that's really important is commissioning. And there will be a measured amount of commissioning, which goes back to this is an aftermarket, if you will, or a third party, a testing and assessment of elements of construction. So we did this when we did the center school project. When you pour concrete, there are concrete samples taken, and those are tested so that you identify how it cured and, and that the strength is there, that it's set appropriately. There are samples taken of steel. You name it, in all of the trades across the board, we'll do commissioning with a third party firm. And that's an important element of protecting the investment of the taxpayer. All of that soft cost wraps into about $1.95 million. And then the team that we've been working with came back and suggested an owner's contingency of $1.1 million against this project. We've worked really hard to identify to the extent possible with forensic analysis in the building everything that we can identify. You can go into the, 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 the dugout, the bomb shelter, whatever it is. You, you guys, a lot of you grew up and went through that school. We, you can go in, for instance, and you can see and you can bore. You, I, you can tell a lot about about the dirt that's underneath the site. And there's not, a lot of, there's not a lot of exposure in this project to dirt we haven't already turned over once before, meaning where the, where the new piece will go, it's already been excavated. And I said, I say new only because it'll replace the sixth grade wing and out back, it'll connect the two wings. So there's not a lot there to, to identify as, as unknown. Mr. Lassard, if he were here, would remind us all that we have abated every every inch of or every instance of asbestos that we know of. Certainly, there will be a pipe chase somewhere that we'll open up, and there will be asbestos there to be abated. We haven't found it all and seen it all necessarily, but but there's nothing lingering from the past that we have to address because anything we know of, we've already fixed. So we really feel that that is as tight right now at this stage of the process as we can go with with that uh, with that uh, owner's contingency. And all of that adds together to $24,945,000. And, and the team stands behind that. And with an affirmative vote in March, we move forward very quickly with, with full design because they anticipate that they will begin in the summer of 16. And if you want to take just a minute, I would share with you that one of the documents that you've already had is a, is a rough sketch or a rough plan of the phasing of the project which would include in the first summer, this would be next summer, demolition of the sixth grade wing and the lower gymnasium, making room so that over the course of the 16, 17 year, they would construct in its place. That which you see here is red. In the, in the summer of 17, they would pay particular attention to renovation of the cafeteria and kitchen area because they have only the couple of months of summer to turn that over and give it back to the school so the students can use it. <coughs> and then in the 17-18 school year, they would, in pieces, move throughout the existing structure that remains, the old 39 wing and the 65 wing, and they would renovate indoors over the course of that school year so that final punch list items and, and final cleanup would be done in the summer of 17, uh, excuse me, the summer of 18, and we would be we would be in and complete before the school year started for 1819. So that's that phasing to give you a sense of that. 
obviously tax impact is what's most important. And I, I'm trying, and uh, Jerry, as a member of the board and an interested, uh, an interested citizen as well, we've been working hard at, at documents and, and at graphics and illustrations to try to communicate this. But here's what I'll offer again tonight like I did last time. In year number one, which is this, this warrant we're considering, we have to raise $460,000. 460,550 specifically, which is the estimated first year payment, interest payment only, against the bond sale if we went to bond in June of 2016. So we have to make that interest payment. A year later, the total bond payment is more like 1.7 million, just under 1.67 million. We'll need to add to the budget another roughly $875,000. But that will join the 450, the 460 that's already in the budget. It'll join the 400, uh, the $340,000 that is no longer needed to f to pay off the uh, center school project. Uh, excuse me, the Marston nice school project. So all of those three pieces of money will wrap themselves together. This year, it's about a 17 cent per thousand impact. The subsequent year, it won't be on the ballot, but it'll be part of the budget and it'll be a 32, per, a 32 cent increase. Assuming that the tax base stays at the $2,714,886,200 that we are now, that number, whatever that number, right? Assuming no change in that, which there's a lot going on in town, there's gonna be a lot of change in that, but based on the number we know right now, uh, you'd be talking about 17 cents this March, or th this coming December in your bill, and 32 cents the subsequent year. That's the tax impact. Questions. I guess that's that's it. That's that's. Questions. That's the project. Sunny. No, I totally agree with that. It has to be replaced. But my position is, the Center Street School is the oldest public school in the state. There's all that recreation land behind it. You could build a brand new academy there with all, with every bell and whistle that we need, and. Well, let me explain it this way. Portsmouth Rehab, their middle school, right? They had a budget of $37 million. Right now, they're $4 million over that. <coughs> they're still struggling. You could be, it's, my understanding is it's always cheaper to build new construction than to, to rehab. I totally agree that the academy has to be replaced. The site is not large enough for the playing fields. The recreation area, tuck field behind the Center Street School, is large enough. It's got a baseball diamond. It's got all kinds. Of, well, uh, what I agree that the academy has to be replaced, but I'm going to abstain because I feel, you know, the board voted, the school committee voted to to go with the rehab. You know my position, so we do. We do. No, so, we so. appreciate that, and yeah. and uh, we understand the dilemma. Yeah. I mean, the board had the same dilemma. They had a land over in Toll Farm Road, and they had to make a decision whether to build new. But four years, five years ago, when Nathan and I came, there was a number on the, and we didn't we didn't push the new school when we first came. It wasn't a good time. The economy wasn't good. People weren't ready for it. Nathan and I needed to do some work. Um, so we've been looking at this, but in 19, uh, what time, when did we come? 19. 2011, <laughs> when we came, it was the, 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 the project was around $29 million for the renovation. So when we got this bid at $24 million, we, we went, yahoo, because it was actually less. Um, and they predicted that the renovation would have been 26 million back then. So we really feel like we've we've made some gains. We have a better understanding of what we need, um, without really going crazy. We went and visited Portsmouth Middle School. It is it's 40 40 plus million dollars, um, but I think what we have will be comparable to that school when when all said and done. Um, and they're in the middle of the city. They don't have any fields. They're, they're, they're right. There's nothing there. There's the library, which is a great asset, absolutely. But we have our library down the street. And, um, and, and so I, we hear you, Sonny. We, we yeah, recognize know, that. We, we, and but we appreciate that you've spent time thinking about it. We really do. And the board does, too. Okay, Madam Chairman, I'd like to move the question, please.
I think, in fairness, if any, but this is a big, Mike, before you look to move the question, this is a big investment. If anybody else has any questions, it's only fair we give them an opportunity. Just a quick note that we will uh, next week on um, uh, the Wednesday, 13th. Wednesday, Wednesday the 13th, 13th at 7 o'clock. At yep. 7 o'clock, we have a bond hearing, so that will be give the community an opportunity again to, to, to uh, share and give input to the school board. That is their meeting. They will stage it. And then, of course, your meeting is the following night on the 14th, so we'll be looking at, again, we'll be looking at uh, any um, money issues. So the community will still have a chance to um, have, in, uh, have an opportunity for input. Thank you. I am going to, you have a question? Maybe we should wait to vote on it until after the bond hearing so we can hear fully from the public then. <laughs> I don't know that that will change us one way or the other. Um, I don't either. Before we move it for a vote here, which I'd like to take tonight, I just want to add these few things. Maybe this will give you some thought, Sonny. Like you, I would have preferred to have seen a brand new school, but I do know this is not a new discussion. It has been out in the community for years, and this community has a love affair with the academy, and this is where this community wants it to be. So that being said, if it were an option to have it somewhere else, I'd be on that bandwagon, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. So the question that you're now left with, is this the time? And do you have a school that's worthy of the 21st century? My children graduated, and both of them were well out of the school system in 2001. It was an old school then. It was tired. As we sit here and discuss a 1939 wing and a 1965 wing, we're all either in retirement or reaching retirement. We probably weren't even in high school, some of us back then. So you got to take the whole picture and see where you are and what you're capable of doing. More than that, we have a team here that's proven itself. Right now, we have, and I'll start at the top, we have a very responsible school board that has been capable of taking the needs of our children and their education and the cost and finding a balance. That's unique in itself. Boards come and go and change, as we know with election to election. We also have a very good and competent team in Superintendent Murphy and Director of Finance, Mr. Lunny, who have proven that they can come in here ask us for money and actually come in under budget and give us a return. That's not a gamble. That's a proven winner. And while it sounds like a compliment, it's meant to be because you've come to us before and you've, you've proven yourselves. This is a much bigger project. But I would say everything subject to change, we may not have the benefit of this triumvirate down the road, of this board with the schools, the school board, with this superintendent and with this financial director who, having worked closely with him in budgets, many people in this room in recent years, all right, you've seen him find ways to pay for things that really scratched it. So I, for one, Sonny, even though my preference, if I had exactly what I wanted, would hands down say, no, I'd rather build new, even if it cost a little more than do this. I'm telling you, my vote is 100% with this team. And I would ask this committee to support, but by all means, you will all vote your conscience. Tim, do you have one more thing to say? Yes, I have uh, some questions and a comment, okay. and not a sales pitch. Uh, the cost. Uh, I noticed that you, you're stating it after doing a net from bonds that are going to get paid off in 2017 and 2018. Those are unrelated bonds that are getting paid off. Correct. So I don't want to relate it. What's the actual cost? Gross. If you, if you had to raise, if you had to raise the entire amount of a full payment. Your annual payment will be right around 1.7, just under 1.7 million. That's about 62 cents per thousand. So it's 62 cents per thousand yeah. per year, 20 years. For 20 years. Thank you. We'll stagger into that. The first year will be just the 17 cents. 
and, and after that, it'll be a full that, 62 cents. Let's not do that net net because those right. are unrelated bonds. They shouldn't be. I understand what you're saying. It does. It's about tax. It does mitigate right. the net effect on the taxpayer. Yep. Right. But let's not. But the sky is the actual cost either. No, so no I want to say it's 62 right. cents per thousand yep. for 20 years. Period. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm not done yet. Well, you paused long enough. I thought you were. <laughs> That's because I'm going on to another topic, Madam Chair. I thought you took a nap. <laughs> or you could interpret it as a dramatic pause. Right, Mr. Bean? <laughs> um, I, I do appreciate that while I wasn't able to attend your presentation on the Budget Committee uh, when you were here last month, I did receive a call from uh, Kathleen, the superintendent, and invited me to come down uh, to meet with Nathan and, and Kathleen personally and have a discussion in which we enjoyed our little threesome for something like two and a half hours. So uh, we really got into a lot of detail, and uh, one of the things that was uh, topical was related to the IT subcommittee, and uh, because as you recall, the IT subcommittee had determined that, uh, in fact, we made a motion as a matter of a policy statement that no modern renovation can truly be considered modern unless it incorporated fiber optics. So I would like you to make the statement that you made to me earlier tonight with regard to your promise that this does include plugging in fiber optics into uh, Hampton Academy. As a part of the project, Hampton Academy will be, will be, uh, up, will be upgraded to a fiber bandwidth, a fiber connection. Excellent. Thank you. It'll come in. Yeah, it'll come into the building. It'll go to the to the. We call them MDFs and IDFs. Don't need closets. to get into the details. The but deal is, either. we're going to get fiber optics into that building. We are. Okay, and that is absolutely essential, Madam Chair, because the school system is becoming increasingly dependent on using the internet as part of their curriculum. Mm -hmm. The expectation from that policy is that that will actually increase over time, yes. without any. Any horizon that says it's not going to increase anymore after year X, it's just going to continue to increase. Agreed. As far as we can see. So it's vital that we have uh, optimum bandwidth coming into that building if we're going to, in fact, execute this uh, curriculum policy. And that is a major, major plus to me. I will point out to you that in the two and a half hours, I brought up a number of points. Some things I liked, some things I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go into the details of all those things I like and what I didn't like because that's all really a matter of personal taste. We could have done this this better or that better. It would have been better for the community to do it this way or that way. Everyone can sit there and do that. And I appreciate you tolerating me bouncing those ideas off you. But as a legislative person, as a legislator go to the time meeting to vote on this, as a committee of the legislature, the budget committee, I have to look at the whole package. And I can see ways of doing this better from a financing deal, from a reconstruction, from a uh, architectural deal, as we discussed. Are you now ready to vote? Amen. But I am, I am telling everyone that the critical element is to make sure that the building is going to support the curriculum policies that are in place and are anticipating. And that I can clearly say it does do that. And while I am not going to give a sales pitch, I'm not 100% on board. Um, I'm well over 51% on board, so I will be supporting this openly as I do now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your, your fine work. OK. All those in favor? Opposed? Wasn't too long, was it? So I have 13 yes and one abstention. Can I make a comment? Not, not that I can outdo my <laughs> over here, but that would be tough. We are committed to hearing from everyone. Um, the door is not closed on this project. If if we have good ideas or ways that we can save money, we want to do that. Um, we are buying books via the technology. We are not buying textbooks. We are doing things differently, just to get your answer in. Um, 
and, and, and we are committed to doing that. If you tell us and you sit with Nathan and I and you say, there's a hey, have you considered this strategy for bonding or whatever? There's a lot of ideas out there. We want to be able to hear that because that's how this, is, this project has strengthened. Quite frankly, Nathan and I, we just submitted today, I signed the, the document, the A24P, and it's an application that we sent to the Department of Ed because we're not going to just let them tell us there's no money. We're going to continue to do all the paperwork until they're going to be tired of us. And when it comes time to testify at the, at, the, at the legislature in front of House Finance and House Ed around the $50 million bill that's up there now to bring back school aid, you can be rest assured that Nathan and I will be there because we, we're not done yet. We're, you know, yeah, the number's there and the, the Nathan's figured out all the dollars and cents. That, it's all there, I get that. But we're not done yet. Um, seeking ways in which we can support this project that is, and we haven't talked about kids, you know, but it is so critical to the kids. And we have great kids in this town, and uh, I, I think they deserve it. I, I would agree with Sunny and the rest of you that they deserve this, this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you.